Good morning all. This is the Bluetti AC200 portable power generator. Basically it's a big box full of lithium batteries, 1700 watt hours, and a 2 kilowatt pure sign inverter. This UK model has two 240 volt AC outlets and a whole load of DC outlets. This 12 volt 25 amp on that aviation connector 12 volt 10 amp cigarette lighter accessory socket two 12 volt 3 amp outlets on 2.1 millimeter dc barrels a pd outlet usb type c 60 watts two 5 volt 3 amp usbs and another two 5 volt 3 amp usbs on the lower left hand side there are two input ports this one 7.9 millimeters for the AC power adapter. And here's another of those aviation type connectors. This is the PV input, 35 to 150 volts, 12 amps max. It can also take input from an, a vehicle, 12 volts or 24 volts at up to eight amps. Uh, and you can put another power adapter in here, another AC power adapter and run both inputs at the same time. And above those input connectors, there's a fan. On the top there are two Qi 15 watt wireless charging pads for phone or tablet. And back on the front there's this illuminated power button and this color LCD with touch screen. Accessories supplied are this dust or rain cover, warranty card and user manual and a bag of cables. The cables include a power lead for the AC adapter, a PVMC4 connector to XT90 cable, a cigarette socket or accessory socket to XT90 cable, and also this XT90 to Weipu SA20 series aviation connector, which connects to the charge input on the AC200. Also supplied is this AC power adapter. It's 58 volts, seven amps, 400 watts, and it's terminated in a 7.9 millimeter power connector. So let's charge the AC200 using the supplied AC adapter. The 7.9 millimeter connector plugs into this input, the adapter input. Charging power is about 360 watts when the batteries are at 0% and it rises to about 410 watts when the batteries are nearly full. A full charge takes a little over five hours and I measured the total energy drawn from my wall outlet at 1780 watts. When the battery reaches 100% state of charge, notice that the cell voltages are at 4.1 volts. They're not taken all the way up to the normal maximum of 4.2 volts. My first discharge test will be with this small oil filled radiator. It draws about 435 watts and I'm going to measure the total energy used draining the battery right down to 0%. The fan has just come on on the AC200 and I've noticed that the inverter temperature is now 38 degrees C. The test has now completed. The AC200 is at 0%. And the result for the oil filled radiator is 1.394 kilowatt hours. But notice that although the unit is showing 0%, if we go into BMS, the cells have not been discharged to 3.0 volts. They've been discharged to 3.4 volts. And this restricted voltage range from 4.1 volts at the top to 3.4 volts at the bottom is done to give the battery pack a longer life. But that does mean that the usable capacity of the AC200 is not 1700 watt hours, it's 1700 times 0.9, which is 1530 watt hours. Now, if you multiply 1530 by 0.88, 88% efficient pure sine wave inverter, we get 1346 which is close to the reading we got for the oil filled radiator. Now I've done two further discharge tests all the way from 100% to 0%. 
using this fan heater, first at one kilowatt, uh, it was actually about 950 watts, and then secondly at two kilowatts, it was about 1900 watts. And the results are at the one kilowatt discharge, 1340 watt hours, and at the two kilowatt discharge, 1332 watt hours. So what's my impression of the AC200 having tested just the AC output? Well, it has a powerful inverter. You can run this thing at the full two kilowatts all the way from 100% to 0% battery, but it will only run for about 40 minutes at two kilowatts. And that's because the 1700 watt hour battery is neither fully charged nor fully discharged to give it a longer life. And because inverter electronics aren't 100% efficient, this one is maybe 90%, possibly 88%. But because of the powerful inverter, this unit is suitable for running heating appliances such as kettles, toasted sandwich makers, or indeed toasters. But it's not going to be suitable for heating your RV or cabin, particularly overnight when you can't supplement the energy in here from the solar input. Now I want to talk about the AC200P for which I will provide links down below uh, for Amazon UK and Germany. The P stands for phosphate. So they're changing the battery from lithium nickel manganese cobalt to lithium iron phosphate. Now that means the AC200P will have 16 nominal 3.2 volt cells whereas this machine has 14 nominal 3.7 volt cells. The AC200P has a larger battery. It's 2000 watt hours, but it's still subject to the 90% depth of discharge, uh, same as this unit. And now let's do some technical stuff for my electronics viewers. So one of the questions that comes up quite a lot is, can you connect both charge sources and outputs at the same time, a sort of pass-through mode or kind of UPS mode? And the answer is yes, you can. And in fact, you can connect two input sources and multiple output sources at the same time. So let's try two ins and two outs. So you can see on the inputs, I've connected the AC charger, which is plugged into the mains, and also the aviation connector, which I'm going to plug into an accessory socket so 12 volts and I'm going to use the EB150 to provide the 12 volts at about 8 amps so let's switch that on and also switch on the DC output and so there are the two input sources 99 watts from car so that's the accessory socket and 360 watts from the AC charger from the mains so for the outputs, I'm going to use these two Ryobi chargers. Now this one is a 12 volt DC charger. So that's plugged into the 12 volt output of the AC200. And this one is a mains charger. Let's connect them up. Let's turn the DC output on. And I'll also turn the AC output on. And uh, here we can see we've got two charge sources, 99 watts coming from car. That's coming from the accessory socket. 360 watts coming from the AC adapter. And in terms of power going out, 73 watts going to the DC load, which is my 12 volt Ryobi charger. And 87 watts going to the AC load, which is just a regular AC Ryobi battery charger. And so yes, UPS or pass-through mode is entirely possible with multiple inputs and multiple outputs. And so in the next video, I want to test more of the outputs, see if I can trigger some of the fault messages. I want to try different input sources in the PV input, including power supplies. And I want to test the wireless charging pads on the top of the unit. But for the moment, cheerio.